A correspondent special now on BBC Two. Steve Bradshaw investigates allegations of corruption in Pakistan. This is a strange story that begins in an ordinary street in Essex. It's a story that leads from Ilford to Islamabad. Now, as Sharif's first run for Prime Minister was in 1990, financial controversy has dogged his political career. He and party colleagues are said to have been paid money from a state bank for their campaigns. It's alleged that military intelligence agents secretly gave them briefcases of cash. It submitted to the court, the intelligence officer who allegedly acted as the go-between listed Nawaz Sharif as having received 3.5 million rupees. I'm not going to uh, seek to decide this because this issue is before the Supreme Court of Pakistan. In the 80s, the Sharif family business, called the Itifaq Group, grew from humble origins to become one of the country's largest enterprises. Though some of the Sharif family mills are now almost derelict, at the start of the 90s, they prospered with methods that were as farcical as they were illegal. What Malik investigated and put before the court were allegations that the family, having moved money out of Pakistan in the good times, were now bringing it back when they needed it. His case began with a bank account in the name of a Mr. Sulman Zia, a name that became central to his investigations. Downtown Lahore, where Mr. Zia's account was opened in 1992 at this bank. Malik's inquiries showed mysterious deposits of hundreds of thousands of dollars paid into the account in traveler's checks. Traveler's check mounting to US dollars, 700,000. 700,000 in, in dollars account. in traveler's yes. checks. So it was very intriguing for us. So that gives us a suspicion, suspicion that it is money laundering. Bank records obtained by Malik show that in one seven-month period alone, the fortunate Mr. Zia had travellers' cheques worth over one and a half million dollars paid into his account. I tried to pay a modest five dollars into Mr. Zia's account. The account still exists. The bank confirmed both the name and the number. But while the account is obviously real, Malik claims Mr. Zia is not. The money, his FIA men told the court, was the Sharif's. But there was no paperwork to prove it. And what if there really was a Mr. Zia? On the account application form, Mr. Zia's occupation was described vaguely as agriculturalist. The address given was Main Bazaar Sahiwal, though curiously it said no correspondence. We went to Sahiwal to try and find a Mr. Sulman Zia, or even just his address in the Main Bazaar. By the way, the Main Bazaar is not the name of the Bazaar, the name of the Main Bazaar is the name of the Main He's a fake man. He doesn't exist. The trail led to London. Malik claimed that millions of dollars issued from the Zia and other fake accounts had been paid into accounts opened back in Pakistan in the names of a London family, a family called the Kazis. Unlike the mysterious Salman Zia, the Kazis really existed. They had passports. But the passports were British. None of the family had even been in Pakistan when the accounts opened in their names were opened there. The trail to the Kazis led past the city, well past it. It led to Ilford in Essex. The Kazis' home is in this busy Ilford High Street. To the family's bemusement, letters started dropping through their letterbox from the banks in Pakistan. The good news for the Kazi family was that accounts opened in their names had millions of dollars in them. The bad news was that it was being used as a way of guaranteeing loans to Pakistani companies. Companies connected to the family of the Prime Minister of Pakistan. One day, Kashif Kazi opened a letter that said he had over two million dollars. But it had been used for a loan to Hudaybiyah Engineering, a Sharif family company which had not paid any of its dues. Kashif Kazi was now being asked to please arrange the payment. Another worrying letter warned, in spite of the bank's repeated reminders and constant follow-up, it had not received any payment from the Sharif company money had been lent to. This now somewhat decrepit factory is one of those the money in the Kazi accounts had been lent to. 
It was part of a scheme to bring black money back into the country without it being taxed and without revealing where it had come from. The Kazis deny any involvement in the opening of the Lahore accounts. So was there any connection between them and the Sharifs? Speculation in Pakistan has centered round a mutual friend. He's a man who, in the 70s, was a paying guest of the Kazis when he was studying in London, Mr. Ishaq Dar. Mr. Dar was unavailable for interview, but he did write to us. He said the Kazis are friends of him.